started having back issues back in um, about 1987 and it was just one of those things that I learned to deal with. I learned that I had disc issues for, for the longest time, uh, but there was never really any nerve impingement that they could see because I went through the myelograms and the, the MRIs and, and different tests. Um, but it was one of those things I, I pretty much learned, hey, it, it hurt to do this, so I just quit doing that. And um, as it, it got a little worse, I uh, went to pain management doctor and I would get the, the cortisone steroid shots in, in my, my lumbar, my uh, sacrum area, I was getting them in my neck. Um, and then some of those would last two years at a time. And they had always told me that, that that window would get shorter and shorter as your body just got used to those. And it got to where the last few shots where it only last a couple of months. So then I just stopped getting them. Um, and then the last MRI that I, that the, that the pain management doctor sent me to, he, it was on the write-up that there were Tarlov cysts. That was when I first heard about them. Once I started seeing that, that the Tarlov cysts were showing up on my, my MRI, I brought that to the attention of the, the physician that I was currently going to, um, other than the pain management doctor, and the first thing he had to do was, was Google Tarlov cysts. He had no idea what they were, and he kept telling me that he needed to follow their protocol for their standard operating procedures for, for treatment. So the first thing they do was send me to physical therapy. And I would go through that and go through that and I kept telling them, I says, listen guys, every time you get me to bend over, I spend the next two days at home, I can't walk, I'm, I'm in excruciating pain. What, what, about these, what about these things here? You know, well, we, we don't see any evidence of nerve impingement on your discs that should be causing what your the symptoms that you're describing and I'm, I kept saying but what about these and and I wasn't ever getting any feedback from the Tarlov cysts and, and it was very very frustrating because I knew there was something more out there so I did my own research on Tarlov cysts and again going back to my my uh, primary care doctor um, orthopedic and you know I wasn't getting any headway with them they just kept they said well you know Mr. Alfred it's just like when you take a vehicle to a mechanic the first thing they're going to do is to see if it's out of gas so that's the way we're going to treat you the first thing we're going to do is send you to physical therapy and treat you with with drugs and I said but you're not we're not making any headway so he went ahead and scheduled another physical therapy appointment and and I said fine and when I left there I, I don't recommend this, but as you're driving, I was Googling Tarlov cysts, and that's when I found the Tarlov Cyst Foundation, and that's when I found Dr. Fagenbaum. And I had an appointment set up by the time I got home, and I called back to my regular doctor, and I canceled my physical therapy appointment. You know, being someone who has had, you know, dealing with a back issue since, since I was in the service back in 1987, I knew the pain that I was feeling for that long period of time, but I knew that there was something different that I was feeling. I mean, it's not that, hey, they told me that I've got Tarlov cysts now, so I'm automatically feeling different. I was already, in my mind, I knew, hey, something's different back there, that when I would rock back on my tailbone, it would feel like I was sitting on little pebbles. Um, I was losing strength in my, in my legs. It got to where I could not, I could sit at a 90 degree angle right here and try to raise my feet up off the ground and I couldn't. They, I couldn't even raise them off the, off the floor. Uh, standing up, trying to bend over to just put on my, my socks or my pants, I could not raise my knee up past my, my waist. So I knew something was back there that was holding in that back and it was, and it was to a point to where um, my wife had to help me get dressed on occasions because I just could not do it. And like I said, I, I love out, you know, outdoorsy and, and cutting the grass. Um, I would be out mowing the yard and my left leg would give out and I would just fall right down on the ground. And there would, there would be times where I'd be just mowing the small front yard and I'd fall six or eight times. So it, uh, I, knew, I knew I was taking a downhill turn pretty quick. And the duration of that lasted, I, it, it started spiraling pretty quick uh, 
before my, my initial appointment with Dr. Fagenbaum, I would say about six months right there, I mean, I knew I was taking a turn for the worse. So my symptoms weren't the same as what I had been, been dealing with in the past. I knew there was something else going on. In my day, I had been known to, to hop on my, uh, my road cycle, my 21-speed bike, and I would ride, do the 100-mile century rides. I would do the, the 100K rides. Uh, I, would, I would ride almost every day. And I had a motorcycle that um, about 5, 6 o'clock every day, I would hop on that just to cruise around town, just to, you know, let my hair down. And, uh, but it, uh, it got to the point to where I, wasn't, I, I could not enjoy those anymore. The, I was spending less and less time on the bike because it was of the pain that I was getting. Every time I would hit a bump, and, and especially on that motorcycle, every time I would hit a bump, it would get to the point to where it would be almost a tear in my eye. And then it just, I had to park it because I couldn't, couldn't ride it anymore. Uh, and same with the, 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 the road bike. I, I just could not enjoy it anymore. And so I had made um, arrangements to sell the motorcycle back to the Honda dealership. And so I rode, when I was riding it up there, my wife was following me. And I got about a quarter of the way there. And I was like, man, I, I love riding this bike. I, I think I might change my mind. You know, once I get there, well, just another mile down the road, hitting a bumpy area in the road, I w it, it had a quick reminder because I was hitting those bumps and just the feeling back there in my tailbone. I mean, by the time I got to the, to the dealership, I was in tears and I said, I, that's why I'm, I'm selling this bike because I just can't enjoy it anymore. We, uh, we go to Canton Trade Days quite a bit. Uh, my folks are a little older and they, uh, they have a, a camper and they like to take it to, to Canton and we have our motor home we like to go to Canton uh, to just to stay the weekend because they they can't do the entire Canton trade days in you know in one sitting you got to do a little bit here a little bit there uh, so I would still want to go because uh, you know again my wife likes likes doing that as well and there's some junk there I like digging through um, but I just couldn't do it anymore so I found me a walker on Craigslist I picked that up and brought it home I, uh, I have a job, uh, I work for a large uh, computer company and I support one of the airlines here and I'm able to work remotely but I, several times a week I go into the, to the offices, the corporate offices for client meetings and it got to the point to where I was, I was taking my cane, I, uh, I did not have the, the, the ability to, to carry my backpack with my laptop in there, it was too heavy. I, so I started using a roller, a roller bag. Then it, I was having issues where I um, would stumble on the stairs, or I would trip and fall even with my cane. So my boss says, "Hey, let's 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 leave you at home, you know, and don't worry about coming in here for some of your client meetings. If you can do them over the phone or conference calls, you know, rather than the face to face." And and that's where anybody who didn't have who who didn't have the, the kind of job that I have where I can work from home, they would have been between a rock and a hard place. They wouldn't have been able to perform their work. They wouldn't have been able to work. And so it got, I could not sit in my, my desk chair at my home office for just but a couple of minutes. So I put a, a TV tray next to my bed and put my laptop on it. And I would use, uh, rather than a mouse pad, I would just use my, I had a, a elliptical mouse and I would just use it on my leg as I was laying on my side and then you know after about 20 minutes I would have to roll over to my other side so I would just move the laptop to the other side of the bed so but I I worked from bed for probably a month before before surgery I and like I said if people who didn't have the ability to perform their work from home I don't know what they would have done they would have been out of work through my research um, on the, on the web, I found uh, the Tarloff Cyst Institute, which led me to uh, Dr. Frank. And I watched a few of his videos, and then I did my research on the different kinds of treatment. Uh, some, some doctors just, um, you know, uh, aspirated the, the cyst and, and left it alone, and they would grow back. And, you know, I, I, I followed up on, on different types of uh, doctors, different types of treatments. So I knew the different things that, that he did differently from, from everyone else prior to, to coming here. The, the first appointment with, with Dr. Fagenbaum, I brought the, 
the final MRI that I had from my previous doctor, but it was, it was from uh, the lumbar area, so it just got the top of the sacrum. And he was, even just in that MRI, he was able to show me one of the Tarloff cysts down there. So he sent me back to get another MRI of the, of the sacral, coccygeal area. And whenever I brought that back, he was able, you know, for a follow-up appointment, he was able to see, yeah, hey, there's, there's four of these rascals down there. And then he explained to me, um, you know, what he, what he does. And uh, I, I felt very comfortable here with the staff and everybody here. And he had let me know, hey, this is what we need to do to get those things out of there. And uh, we, we set up a program to, to move forward. Uh, the day of the surgery, um, I, I wasn't timid or scared at all about it. I was comfortable with the man that I was going in there with, with the, the people who had supported me that I was going in there with. Uh, the folks over there at the Pine Creek Medical Center were fantastic. They made me feel like I was the only one there. And I think my wife was more nervous than, than anyone, you know. But uh, going to the day of the surgery showed up that morning and then went in my pre-op and uh, I, was, I was comfortable. I was, I was ready to get it done. In the pre-op room, they put the, I'm not sure what you call them, but those, those white leggings on there, I guess, to keep the blood flow uh, up to where it needs to be or up. And uh, me being the joker, I, you know, they had the blankets and everything covered up. And my wife was around the corner and she said that she could hear me just singing, I'm too sexy for these stockings or something like that. And she came around the corner and took a picture of me with those stockings on. And it, I mean, I, I was just so comfortable that uh, I wasn't timid. I wasn't, sh I mean, afraid of, I, I, I was more afraid of the outcome than the, the procedure. And then the outcome was even better than I imagined. So when, when I came to, uh, I knew that they had, they had told me previously that I had to stay completely flat for a certain amount of time um, and all I was able to eat was popsicles and that, that, was, that was fine because I, I love popsicles. And then they would raise me up 10 degrees every, every half hour or every 45 minutes or every hour, 10 degrees to, to make sure that I wasn't having any of the concussion headaches, which was a deal for me because in the past when I'd had the myelograms, I would, having, uh, I would have clot issues in the past and I would have those concussion headaches. So the way they did that, um, I didn't have any issues. As they would raise me up, I was literally going, okay, am I gonna have one of these headaches? Because that's some of the worst pain I've ever been in in my life. And the way they progressively did that, I was fine. So whenever I got to 90 degrees, I was sitting up, they were able to, to feed me, and, and I, was, I, was, I was doing great. And that, that evening, after staying flat for 24 hours, that, that evening of the second day, um, they brought a, a physical therapist in to get me up. And they, they, he, he brought in a walker, they put a, uh, a tether around my, my uh, torso here to in case if I stumbled or whatever that he could grab me. They put the walker by the edge of the bed. Um, he says, do you need help standing up? And I said, well, let me try it first. And I just popped right up. and. And the first thing I wanted to try is to stand up on my tiptoes. My, actually, my wife even asked. She says, hey, try that, because she knew that that was something that I couldn't do before. And as I was standing there on that walker, I went up on both toes, went up on my right toe and on my left toe, and I was almost in tears just knowing that I could do that, you know. So the physical therapist and I made our way around uh, the room to the, to the hallway, and we hooked them down the hallway. Well slowly, but we made our way down the hallway, turned around and came back. And I, I didn't have any issues with that. So they, um, they uh, took my catheter out when I got back to the room and, and I, was, I was doing fine. They got me up and I was able to, to uh, put on some shorts and I sat into a, a reclining chair that they had there, was able to, uh, to eat sitting there. And uh, so that, that day I was, I was feeling good and they had removed me from my, my IV, which was, had my pain meds in there, and I don't recall taking any further medication after that. Um, the next morning, when I woke up, Dr. Fagenbaum was standing at the foot of my bed, and uh, he asked me, he said, well, Mr. Alford, how are you doing? I says, I'm doing great. 
I says, uh, I said, I would be better if in the morning, being Saturday morning, you know, this was Friday, I said, I would be better if I could be at home watching football on my own TV. And he said, well, tell you what, he says, if you can get up and walk down the hallway by yourself, he says, I'll discharge you this evening and you'll be home for in the morning. And I started getting up out of bed. My wife says, Scott, hang on a second. You might want to put on some pants, you know. And I says, okay. So I put on some shorts and, and a T-shirt. And the physical therapist was near me. But I, I went down the hallway by myself, walked into the atrium by myself, turned around and came back. And he just looked at me like, wow. And so I sat back down, and they started, started my, my discharge for that, that evening. So I, and I went home that night. So I was... Rather than staying four nights is what they, what they generally like, I, two nights and I was home. What I, one of the things that I liked about uh, the procedure and the, the, the follow-ups with, with Dr. Frank and his staff is he keeps track of his patients out two years. I, I came in, you know, a, a, like a week after, a month after, six months after, a year after, then two years after. And he, you know, they can put you on strict guidelines, don't lift this amount of weight, uh, don't do this, don't do that. Well, I kind of got cocky and overdid it on some occasions and, and was, would, would deal with some, some pain, but that was my own doing. But, and I would come and talk to Dr. Fagenbaum and he, you know, would let me know, hey, that's, that's why we give you these rules. And, but having the follow-up, um, the follow-up MRIs, everything was showing that the, the stents and things were still holding perfect, uh, no new uh, cysts were growing, um, the ones that were there were, were, still, were still gone, you know, they could see, you know, there's still uh, evidence that they were there, you know, they still show up, but no, no pain from them at all. Um, I'm back to, uh, to bike riding. Um, I'm having other issues with, with my back that's not Tarlov cyst related, so I can't ride my upright bike anymore. So I, ride a, I went out and test rode a recumbent bike, and the way it, it cradles my, my spine, uh, I love that. And I, I ride 40, 60, 100 mile bike rides now doing that, and uh, I, I just could not have imagined doing that, you know, this time two years ago. I do my own yard work now. I can trim the hedges now. I uh, we travel in the motorhome. I can. I got to the point where you know before I, you know, an hour or two sitting in that seat, I, I couldn't couldn't drive that distance. And now we, you know, drive to my in-laws house in Mobile, Alabama, and about an 11-hour trip, and I can do that without even batting an eye. So I'm back to doing what I was doing before. Back when I uh, was in the in the Marine Corps, my last name being A L F O R D, I uh, I had every, my my uh, nickname was Alf, Corporal Alf. Well, in 1987, I got a package. I lived in a in a squad bay with like 40 other Marines. I get a package from from home. Well, everybody gathers around when you get a package from home because everybody assumes it's candy or cookies or cakes or whatever. So. They're gathered around, I'm opening this box, and it's an ALF doll from my mom. That's what she sent me for my 19th birthday was an ALF doll because of that, you know, since that was my nickname. And that went, when I deployed, when I was in the service, that, that I say doll, but he was, you know, a little companion at the time. But in this, this little doll uh, became kind of my, my good luck charm. We take him when we, when we travel. Uh, we've we've gone overseas, and this little thing's gone with us everywhere. Well, he went through my journey of my of my surgery with me. So when I woke up in recovery, my wife had him sitting on the bed next to me. When as I made my journey through, uh, you know, going from sitting up to moving to the chair, he was sitting there with me, just kind of like my good luck charm. So he went he went through the journey with me. Everybody here made me feel comfortable. Um, my, my questions were always answered. My phone calls were always answered. Uh, when, when I needed to fax items here, email items here, they always let me know, hey, we received these, so I didn't have to worry if it got there. Uh, the, the, the process was just seamless. And it was, I know it was easier for me being a local patient rather, you know, than somebody having to come in from out of town. Because I, sitting in the waiting room in here, talking with other people, uh, that coming in from out of town from 
you know, Wisconsin or wherever, and they were like, oh yeah, they put us up in a hotel and, you know, just, I mean, I met some good people sitting in here and I could tell they were in pain, but we were, we had something in common and we were talking about it. And, and even coming here for my follow-ups, talking to people who were in my position a year ago, I was telling them, hey, you, you couldn't have picked a better place to be, you know, just because of the, the, the folks here and the doctor and, and the, the treatment. So I, you know, I'm a, I'm a cheerleader for it. So.